that's a big order. Mm. Um, the food industry is huge. In the United States alone, it's more than a trillion dollars a year in products. Everybody has to eat three times a day or more. Uh, and the food industry is very competitive because we have probably twice as many calories available in the food supply as anybody needs. So it's a hugely competitive industry. And to sell their products, they spend about probably in the order of $30 billion a year uh, on marketing. That is marketing that goes through advertising agencies, which is in the range of about $10 billion a year. And then for every dollar they spend through advertising agencies, there's an estimated $2 in other kinds of marketing. So for any one single product, the amount of money that's spent just through advertising agencies is in the order of 10, 20, 50, 100, 200 million, up to a billion dollars a year for the really big companies. Uh, I can give some examples. Please. Uh, for example, in 2011, this figure just sticks with me, um, Coca-Cola spent $267 million just to advertise Classic Coke, just through advertising agencies. Kellogg spent $51 million just to advertise Pop-Tarts. Those are the numbers. Wow. Yeah, so there is a, there is a little bit of money involved. There's a lot of money involved, and that's why the fights are so fierce. Sure. So well, everybody has to eat. And we know that people are gaining weight, and they're gaining weight because they're eating too much. And I believe that one of the reasons why people eat so much is because they're constantly sold food. And it's very hard to resist. And the portions have gotten larger, and the calories have gotten larger. And when there's food around all the time, and it doesn't cost very much, and it's yummy, people eat it. Uh, and the obesity, rates of obesity in the United States started to increase when food marketing changed um, from you know, usual kinds of advertising to a much, much more aggressive kind of marketing that started to occur in the 1980s. And this has now been very well documented. I, and you have to feel sorry for food companies. Their job is to make a profit for their investors. They don't really care what the effect of those products are. They just have to keep selling them. And if they can't sell them here, they'll sell them overseas. Oh, sure. I mean, food is very cheap in the United States. We pay less for food on average than any other country in the world. It's under 10% of total expenditures. And that's not only because Americans are so rich. It's also because we have federal policies designed to keep the cost of food down so everybody can have enough to eat. It's hard to argue against low prices, except that the push to keep prices low because low prices is, are one of the factors that sells food. That's what makes people buy more. Um, it doesn't really account for the true cost of food. The true cost of food is seen in the mess that it makes with the environment and what you have to do to clean that up. Um, and of course, in people's health. If people gain a lot of weight and develop type 2 diabetes, there are health care costs associated with that. Some of those will be borne by the individual, but a lot of people don't have enough money to pay for health care, so society picks that one up. Yeah, it's not a very nice disease. Di type 2 diabetes is not a very nice disease either. It requires lifetime care. And it's preventable yeah. in most people. Let's say 90, 95% of people with type 2 diabetes, it could have been prevented by not gaining weight because it's very closely linked to obesity. And for many people who have type 2 diabetes can make the symptoms go away by losing weight. The job of the food industry is to make money. That's its goal. It's not a social service agency. So all food companies care about, particularly publicly traded ones, 
is not only selling their products and making a profit, but because of the way Wall Street operates, they have to grow their profit every 90 days. This puts enormous pressure on food companies. It puts pressure on all companies, but food companies particularly because the food industry is already so competitive because we have so much food. Well, the food label is a very complicated thing, and it's very hard for me to think about a label that would ex that would explain everything that everybody wanted to know about a food in one little square that could fit on a food package. The FDA did the best it could um, in 1990 when it started working on this, and in its consumer testing, it discovered that in all of the different model labels that it tried, consumers couldn't understand any of them. So they picked the one that was least worse, um, the one that uh, consumers could understand the best of a very, very bad lot. Um, so now it's time to change the label. They're, they've been working on it again. They're doing a lot of consumer testing um, and finding out that there's a lot of confusion about labels. If you, if you want to understand how to read the label, you have to go on the website and read pages and pages and pages of electronic material in order to figure it out. So it's not simple to understand. What would be simple to understand, and this has been shown in lots of different research projects, would be color-coded labels, red, red, yellow, and green. Traffic lights. You put a traffic light on a label, everybody understands it. Um, and, of course, it's not so easy to decide which ones would be red, yellow, or green, but they can do it if they wanted to, but the food industry won't allow it. I mean, they will do anything to make sure that the FDA does not do red, yellow, and green traffic light labels. In the United States, our food culture is very diverse. Um, just as we have a very um, diverse population in which there are many points of view and many ways of looking at things in many cultures, there are many different ways of eating. Um, in general, people who are educated and have more money eat more healthfully than people who are poor and aren't educated, uh, but there are exceptions along the way. Um, but the average overall um, diet is one that contains too much food. That's the main problem. Too many calories for the ones that people are expending. Okay. Right. And too many calories from the wrong kinds of foods. For instance? Well, you, dietary recommendations say to balance calories and make sure you eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. That's not the way people in America eat. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by the healthy food industry. If people want to eat healthfully, all they have to do is eat real food. That means they have to cook it themselves, um, and that, for many people, is asking a great deal. But once you get into packaged foods and pre-prepared foods and foods that are sold with ingredients and package labels and all of those kinds of things, you're dealing with industries that are trying to make money. And that, in, that introduces a problem into the equation where, uh, because they have to sell their products, they have to do everything they possibly can to sell them, and that often means putting misleading things on it, like green labels or, um, as we were talking about before, green labels or health claims or other kinds of notions that people react to emotionally and positively, but that aren't necessarily meaningful. For example, um, there's now research that shows that the public in general, if presented with a label that says no trans fat, will think that it doesn't have any calories. If the labels, or not as many, if the label says organic, they'll, they think it doesn't have as many calories. If the label says vitamins added, they think it doesn't have as many calories. And food companies know this. They've done this kind of research for decades. It's only very recently that nutrition researchers and other kinds of public health researchers have started doing these kinds of basic testing that the food industry has done for decades.
thing that you supposed to. Oh, yeah, there's a new study that shows that if you take a, a food product and you take the exact same food product and you put a green label on one and a red label on the other, people think the green one is healthier, has fewer calories, more nutritious, uh, without any change in the actual contents. So we're human. We're very susceptible to these kinds of cues. The food industry knows it, and they use it, and they've known it for a long time, much longer than we have. Well, if I knew the answer to the, that question, how to get people who don't eat healthfully to eat more healthfully, I would be a genius and we wouldn't have a problem. But in fact, the, the kinds of eating patterns that people are accustomed to are so ingrained and so personally important to people that they're very, very difficult to change. Uh, one of the ways to get people to change is if they get sick and a doctor says, you want to live? You better change your diet. That turns out to be a powerful impetus for a, a large number of people. But short of that, you can educate people until you're blue in the face. And if the environment doesn't change to make it easier for them to eat more healthfully, they just can't do it. I mean, one way to get people to eat more healthfully is to reduce portion sizes. But people are so used to large portions now that they feel like they're cheated if somebody gives them a small portion because that change has been so dramatic. Um, if you tell somebody that they can't have more than a 16-ounce soda, they get really upset, even though a 16-ounce soda is two standard servings, 10% of daily calories, and contains the upper limit of what anybody recommends as sh for sugar intake. Oh, calories, without question. I just finished writing a book called Why Calories Count. But if you want to explain obesity, which is clearly one of the two most important public health nutrition problems the world faces today, the other is undernutrition and not having enough to eat, if you want to do something about obesity, you've got to get people to cut their calorie intake. And the question is how to do that. People have to eat less, which nobody wants to do. They have to eat better, which a lot of people can't do or don't know how to do. Uh, and they probably ought to be more active also. Yeah. Uh, about our food culture, the way that our food you know, ecosystem is kind of engineered, what, what frustrates you? Well, I'm a regulation person. Um, I'm not against food companies selling their products, marketing their products. Um, and doing everything they can to sell products, I think there should be some limits placed on what they're permitted to do. Food companies should not be permitted to market to children. Period. End of story. Children are too young to understand what marketing is about. They're extraordinarily susceptible to market, food marketing efforts, um, and it causes no end of woe in families. Uh, to have children marketed to in that way. One way to look at that whole problem is, as a parent, that you want the society to protect your child against those kinds of things. So I would like to see much more regulation, particularly of food marketing to children, but I could think of other ways that some regulation should come in not to stop food companies from trying to sell their products, but to put some limits on what they're doing so that it's not so in your face all the time. Right. We're outgunned in many ways. All the time. I certainly outspent. Food companies outspend any kind of public health effort by orders of magnitude. The converse of that question is what excites you about what you're seeing uh, mm -hmm. in changes perhaps mm -hmm. in our food culture? Well, to me, the most exciting thing that's going on and the reason that I'm still in this game is the food movement. I mean, we have all over the country hordes of young people who are interested in food issues, who want to grow their own food, who want to help other people grow food, who want to make sure that poor people have enough to eat, who want to get food better in schools, um, who care about the environment, who care about health, and are working as hard as they can in every way they possibly can to try to make the food system healthier for people in the planet. Who wouldn't be excited by that? Yeah. Those kind of, that kind of advocacy affects 
marketing to children? Is there anything that can be done about it? I mean, it's tied into a good cause, but... Well, I would say that food companies, social marketing is designed to deflect your attention from marketing to children and the other kinds of things that they're doing to sell their products. So on the one hand, it looks terrific that the soda companies are sponsoring all these community organizations and playgrounds and all of these really wonderful appearing things that they're doing. And what that does is completely divert attention from the way they're in Congress lobbying, um, undermining all of the things that public health people are trying to do, suing New York City over the 16-ounce soda cap, and doing all of these other things. And so on the one hand, they're playing good citizens, but on the other hand, they're really doing everything they can to undermine public health efforts that might result in lower sales. Remember, the bottom line is sales, and they never forget it for a minute. And we shouldn't either. How, uh, how aggressively do they lobby and how effective do they, uh, effectively do they lobby? Well, I think food companies lobby everywhere. Um, there isn't a single food company that's in business that doesn't have a lobbyist in Washington to make sure that no federal agency or Congress make some kind of law or regulation that's going to affect their sales. The range of issues that they lobby on is extraordinary. I mean, they're paying people to stay right on top of anything that's going on in Washington that might affect their sales. Um, and the amount of money that they spend on it is, you know, it's in the millions. I can't say how, how much it is because they do have to report it, but they don't. the money isn't attached to any particular issue. They do have to state what issues they're lobbying on, but they don't have to say what their position is on them necessarily or how much effort they're putting into them. But they don't miss a trick. 